If you're just beginning perfumery, you've probably already heard that perfume is made by mixing alcohol with a mixture of fragrant raw materials. However, which alcohol exactly to use can be a little bit confusing. In this video, I'm going to break down all of the terminology surrounding alcohol and perfumery, so by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which alcohol to buy and which alcohol to avoid. Firstly then, what is alcohol? Well, in chemistry, what an alcohol is, is any molecule attached to an OH functional group. Now, what does that mean? Well, it just means whenever you have a molecule that's got a bond to an oxygen atom and another bond going from that oxygen atom to a hydrogen atom, that molecule is automatically classed as an alcohol. So because any molecule can have one of these OHs attached to it, that means technically there's an infinite number of alcohols that you could have. Take cedrol, for example. This is a complex alcohol that's found in cedarwood essential oil. It's one of the components in that mixture. However, when you or me normally refer to alcohol, what we usually mean is a very specific molecule, and that's the same molecule that's found in things like alcoholic drinks and, yes, perfumes. So that alcohol that most people call alcohol is a specific alcohol called ethanol, and that's a molecule where you've got this OH group again, but specifically this time it's bonded to an ethyl group, or what that is is essentially a certain arrangement where you've got two carbon atoms and five hydrogen atoms surrounding them, and when you've got that bonded to the alcohol, that makes what's called ethanol, or in common language, just alcohol. So then, alcohol, or ethanol specifically, is what's used in perfumes, so surely we should just be looking for ethanol to use in our perfumes. Well, pretty much, yes. However, the problem with that is there are a lot of different products on the market sold as ethanol. For example, technically, vodka is just a mixture of ethanol and water. However, you don't want to be making your perfumes out of vodka, for reasons we'll discuss in a bit. So, what are the different kinds of alcohol that you might hear about when you're looking online for alcohol to put in your perfume? Well, I've seen terms like denatured alcohol, trade-specific alcohol, perfumous alcohol, rubbing alcohol, grain alcohol, Everclear, vodka, witch hazel, methanol, and there's also a question of, well, if I use alcohol for my perfume, should I also add a bit of water in it as well? So in this video, I'm gonna go through that list of things I just mentioned and explain which you can and which you can't use in your perfumes. And I'm also gonna explain a little bit as to why. Let's start then with denatured alcohol. So what is denatured alcohol? Well, when alcohol is denatured, what that means is it's been made unfit for human consumption. That's usually by the addition of a poison or a bad tasting chemical to the alcohol. So it follows from this that you wouldn't want to necessarily be going and using any old product labelled as denatured alcohol in your perfume, and that's because some of these denaturants are quite toxic. So essentially, if you pick the wrong type of denatured alcohol, you could be putting poison in your perfume, which obviously is not what you want to do. Not all forms of denatured alcohol are bad, however. In fact, some types of denatured alcohol are actually ideal for use in perfumery. More specifically, what you want to look out for is cosmetics grade trade specific denatured alcohol, or TSDA for short. Now, there are some different grades of this, but the most common one is SD40B. And if you see SD40B, TSDA, then that's a great alcohol to use for perfumery. Because when you've got cosmetics grade denatured alcohol, the thing they use to denature the alcohol is safe for use in cosmetics. Specifically in SD40B alcohol, they use terp butyl alcohol as the denaturant, and there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever it doesn't make your perfumes harmful, and it doesn't add a smell to your perfumes either. In fact, I've got a load of this here. This is a big five liter um, bottle, and this is what I use in my perfumes, which I sell. Next then is perfumer's alcohol. Now, I use the term perfumer's alcohol on this channel quite a lot in general, just to represent either TSDA or some suitable alternative. Now, there are also a lot of brands out there selling what's called perfumous alcohol, and this is, again, a generic term used to describe some blend of alcohol and maybe some other things that's suitable for use in perfumery. So, for example, I've got some perfumous alcohol here, and this is actually the first type of alcohol or the original thing which I use in perfumery. And the reason that this perfumer's alcohol can be useful is because often to get the TSDA or the trade-specific denurtured alcohol, you need a license. So at least in the UK, you can't buy this without actually having a registered license to buy that alcohol. 
So what you can do instead is buy this perfume as alcohol and it's pretty much the same thing. They've just added a few extra bits to it. However, they've selected the extra bits that they've added to it based on something that would still be suitable in a perfume. So this brand here is Mistral, though I think there are some other brands as well. So if you can't get TSDA, then I would recommend perfume as alcohol. Just make sure you use a trusted brand to make sure that the perfume as alcohol you're using is actually uh, safe to use in perfumes. Next then we have rubbing alcohol. Now this is actually a completely different type of alcohol to ethanol. In fact, this is what's called isopropyl alcohol and this is a different molecule entirely. So this is not really something you wanna be using in your perfumes. Now it is rubbing alcohol, so it is technically safe to use on the skin, but it adds a kind of harsh effect on your skin when you put it on. And also it adds a bit of a bad smell to your perfume. So there's really no reason to use it over the usual ethanol. Also, you may have trouble dissolving some of your raw materials in it and no one else uses this for perfume. So there's just really no reason to even think about using this in your perfume. Another term you may have heard used is grain alcohol. Now, all this means is it's just regular alcohol or ethanol, which has been produced by fermentation of some grains or other plants. And then that's gone and been distilled and made into kind of purified alcohol. Now this can also be termed organic and that's just if the grains or whatever other source material used to create the grain alcohol was organic. Now there's nothing wrong with using grain alcohol and perfumery however you want to make sure firstly that it's not denatured with something that's toxic and secondly you want to make sure that it's not topped up with something else for example water you do want to make sure you've got that uh, pure or at least 95% or above of that pure ethanol. Again with grain alcohol, it doesn't matter if it's grain alcohol or not, you just need to make sure it's cosmetics grade. Another thing that's related to this is Everclear. Now, Everclear is just a brand of grain alcohol that's sold in the US, and there's different proofs of this, which essentially means the different strengths, and the strongest strength, which is 190 proof, and that corresponds to 95% ethanol, um, that's actually just about okay to use in perfumery and that's because this Everclear it's food grade So it's fine to use in cosmetics as well and the 95% ethanol concentration is strong enough for you to use in your perfumes So basically if you're in the US and all you can get hold of is 190 proof Everclear then yes You could use this as an alternative to a cosmetics grade denatured alcohol if you can't get hold of that I'll now move on to some other things which you may have heard from some, well, questionable sources online that you could use in your perfumes, which you certainly shouldn't use in your perfumes. So the first one of these is vodka. Now, the reason you wouldn't use vodka in your perfume is that even though, yes, it does contain ethanol, it's only about 40% ethanol. And what you really want for an alcohol to use in perfumery is to have at least, let's say, 95% of that alcohol. So the thing about vodka is it's just got way too much water in it. That water will essentially interfere with and ruin your perfume. Another thing you should never use is witch hazel. Now, I really don't know why people decided that you could use a witch hazel for perfumes. I don't know where that idea came from, but essentially a witch hazel is some kind of natural product. And I think some witch hazel products have, say, uh, between 10 and 20% alcohol in them, which I guess is why some people assumed you might be able to use it for perfumery. But again, it's um, not enough alcohol at all and a load of other stuff in there that you don't want in your perfumes. So quite simply put, just don't even consider using witch hazel in your perfumes. Now another one is methanol. Now again, I really don't know why people decided that you might want to put methanol in your perfumes. And I'm gonna say it right now, definitely never use methanol in your perfumes. So methanol is a different kind of alcohol than ethanol. And methanol specifically is very toxic and it's also really easily absorbed through your skin. So if you were gonna make a perfume out of methanol, you're essentially creating poison. You just never wanna do this at all. Um, just do not use methanol under any circumstances, especially for perfumes. Now, finally, before I end this video, I just wanna talk about one final topic, which is um, should I add water to my perfumes? Because this is another question that people commonly ask. Now, adding water to your perfumes, some people do add water to their perfumes and it's pretty much a subjective choice. But if you do do it, um, make sure you use just a very small amount. Now, the reason people add water to perfumes is because some people claim if you add water to your perfume, and when we say add water, we're really talking just a couple of percentages, maybe one, two, three percent, something like that, not a lot of water. Some people claim if you add water to your perfumes, it can improve the feel on the skin um, because ethanol has a bit of a drying effect on the skin. And some people also claim it has a positive effect on the diffusion of the smell. 
Now, this is something that's a bit subjective. It's entirely up to you, but if you do add water, again, make sure you only add one or two percent, something very small like that. Just experiment with it. And more importantly, don't just use any old tap water. That's not the kind of water that people are adding to perfumes. It's specifically distilled water or deionized water. This is something you can frequently find in a lab and you should be able to buy it especially. Just make sure you're using that because normal tap water contains ions and this again can disrupt your perfume. So adding water to perfume, that's really just up to you. I don't do it myself, but I know some people do it and sometimes in fragrance companies, they do do it as well. So it's a perfectly valid thing, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna have some massive magical effect on your perfume. It will just have a slight tweak to it. So it's something you can go and experiment with if you want to. Anyway then, now we've gone through all of that, how do we summarize it on what alcohol to buy for your perfumery? Well, essentially look for cosmetics grade, trade specific denatured alcohol or specifically SD40B alcohol. And if you can't find that, then just look for perfumers alcohol by a trusted manufacturer, or you could even use Everclear 190 proof in the United States if you can't find that. On the other hand, never use denatured alcohol that's non-cosmetics grade or food grade, and especially never use methanol or rubbing alcohol in your perfumes. And finally, if you want to add water, it's completely up to you, but if you do only add a tiny amount, maybe one or 2%, and make sure you use deionized or distilled water, it's something just to experiment with. So that's pretty much it about alcohol with perfumery. Hopefully you understand now which alcohol you should be using and buying. If you're interested in learning more about perfumery and the actual fragrant or materials that go into your alcohol and how to blend them and use those to make different perfumes, then definitely check out the other videos on my channel because that's what the channel's all about, teaching you how to do perfumery. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That way you'll get loads of new videos like this every week in your subscription feed. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.